Thank you, thank you. So, uh, Chris, I think it's torch and fire. Torch and fire. <laughs> torch and fire, yeah. You can hear that um, I grew up in France, so I decided to put a Monet painting. You can't see it with this lighting, but it's a uh, data center in impressionist uh, style. Ten. So I'm here to um, basically tell you what AMD is and uh, what, uh, what we have. Um, basically, uh, we launched our first AI data center GPU last year, like January 2025, or it was December 2024. Before that, we didn't have anything for AI. So first product was last year, and we made $5.2 billion with it. And the street was very unimpressed because uh, NVIDIA had $100 billion. But uh, we're here. We have the GPU. It's not competitive with NVIDIA. It's better. We had like 2.4x more HBM than uh, H100 when we came out. H100 was 80 gigabytes. We had 192. Even H200 doesn't match that. And uh, we have the software stack called Rockem, which is basically our CUDA. We have had this one for a long while because we had gaming GPUs and HPC GPUs. So Rockem uh, um, has had a long history. Our language uh, is not called CUDA. It's called HIP uh, for heterogeneous uh, interface uh, programming, something like that. And it's, it's basically the same thing as CUDA. It's C++. Uh, it's uh, just that CUDA over the years has patched like multiple versions of C++ on top of each other. This one is a clean uh, latest C++. And uh, they, have, they have Nickel. We have Rico. Uh, so <laughs> it's not even a joke. Uh, anyways, but the, the, the only big difference, really, is that our entire source tree is open on GitHub. It's, it's here. It's on the rock. It's fully open. You can, uh, uh, you can clone it. You can git clone it. You can compile it. You can run it for any GPU we have. Data center GPU for, for AI, for HPC, gaming GPU, and even laptop GPU uh, on, uh, on Windows. Uh, so we didn't have Windows support. So we open sourced that like a month ago, by the way. This is a month old, and uh, I put the activity on GitHub there for the past month. It's, it's pretty good. So that's the biggest difference. We're, we're fully open. And then uh, we also obviously integrate with open source projects like, you know, PyTorch, uh, Onyx, TensorFlow, JAX, VLLM, SGLang for inference serving, and also uh, with Hugging Face. And when I say we integrate with them, it doesn't mean we just work with them. We actually have a full CI/CD pipeline with them. So they run us daily. When they add new features, when they're new models, they, they, they run CI/CD on AMD GPUs. And so what can you run? Well, pretty much everything. Uh, since we have CI-CD with Hugging Face for now a year and a half, uh, they basically guarantee that all the 2 million plus models they have on Hugging Face run on our GPUs. Everything run. And we see it when there is a new model, like uh, when DeepSeek popped up, it ran on our GPU. Of course, we had to work for a few weeks, two, three weeks, to get the performance closer to the roof line, but everything works out of the box. And uh, you can write uh, optimized kernel in Triton, in, uh, in Mojo, and uh, in, in HIP, and uh, you can quickly get uh, to, to the peak performance. But how to do that? So we have a developer hub. The link is up there. So it's uh, the Rock MAI developer hub that has tons of tips and tricks. First of all, it has a recommended flow for uh, inference, for training, for fine tuning. And we also have uh, dockers. If you don't want to git clone and compile stuff, uh, we have dockers that are ready with VLLM, SGLang, uh, Megatron LM, which is an NVIDIA tool for training. We, we, we branch that, and it works too. 
uh, same as uh, Ricol Nickel. And uh, we have tutorials. We have um, um, uh, Jupyter Notebook based tutorial. And uh, we have also benchmark, we have performance results, and also the script on how to reproduce them. A couple other tools we, we provide. One is Quark, which is a quantization tool. And uh, ba basically, if you want to take DeepSeq and run it in FP4, and you want just the, the gem to be FP4, for example, you can do it with, the, with this tool. And uh, you can also do mixed precision. Some operators should be maybe 16 bits, some eight, some four, in order to meet accuracy. You can do all of that with, with Quark. So I put the, the documentation here, and it's something you can just pip install in your environment. Uh, the other one is Aether. This one is to write kernels, but uh, uh, Mojo would be above all of that. Uh, basically, at the lowest level, you can write kernels in inhip, which is our CUDA, in CK, which is kind of our cutlass. There are a bunch of parameterized templates to tell the tool how they should uh, slice and dice the, the tensors for maximum memory utilization. You can write in assembly if you can, and uh, OpenAI Triton. And uh, Aether basically is an API, it's a Python API and a C++ API that uh, developers can use to, uh, to call the library they want. And uh, Mojo is supposed to be higher level and easier to use, and hopefully better performance, we'll see. Right. And then uh, what, what kind of kernel do you want to optimize with all that? Well, uh, that attention is all you need, right? You, you saw that on the, on the pre-fill side, uh, there is flash attention. You may want to quantize with uh, quark or bits and bytes. Um, hip graph, that's kind of like true digress, so it's uh, instead of launching one kernel after the other, you can create a graph and launch multiple kernels. Uh, page attention with KV cache, uh, that, that's also a kernel to optimize, and uh, tunable ops for, uh, for, make, for, for basically finding the right uh, memory partitioning for, for the gems. But then, um, Okay, that's nice. It's, uh, it's the, the general transformer. Oh, and then you have Rico here. So, so that's nice. That's the general transformer. But in the real world, what happens when a new model comes out, like DeepSeq? Because DeepSeq doesn't really look like that exactly. So that happened. DeepSeq came out. And the, that's from the DeepSeq paper. Uh, and, uh, oh my god, it has tons of experts, 256 experts, so there is a MOE or a fused MOE kernel we can build, and then uh, they didn't have multi-headed attention, they had a multi-latent uh, attention. So uh, we basically had to develop, so, so it ran on day one, but we had to develop all those kernels and fuse them to, to get the maximum performance. And in two to three weeks, we were basically able to double the performance by writing those kernels, which is what you, you, you're going to do today. And we did it in Aether, so I put some, some detail here on uh, which kernel we built. But basically, this is where we are today. Today, if you run the latest TensorRT or VLLM on, on H200 and you compare to MI300X, which is the one we released in December of 2023, this is what you will get. So this graph, in this graph basically uh, we used, uh, I think that's SGLang, yeah, it's uh, SGLang, not VLLM. Uh, we increased the, the concurrency, which is kind of like the batch size, roughly. We increase the, uh, the, the concurrency and we plot the end-to-end -end latency, so how much it takes between the prompt and the final full dot result. Uh, so you can see that it's 10 seconds, 10,000 milliseconds. So it's 10 seconds because uh, 
the, uh, the, the input is quite big, it's uh, 3,200 tokens. The output is 800 tokens. So for, it takes 11 seconds basically for NVIDIA to complete on the concurrency of one. It takes about, what, uh, six seconds for us. And then the curve gets closer and closer, right? But in the real world, when you have a customer like OpenAI or Anthropic, they typically have a latency constraint because they don't want the users to wait for uh, a lot of time. So if you set a latency constraint uh, wherever you need it, you can see the, the, the difference in uh, throughput that you get. In this case, it's almost 2x. So we were basically at this level. And after two, three weeks of working hard on the Aether kernels, we got to that level. And I have no idea whether NVIDIA can do better or not, but th this is where they are today. And the point really here is that people think that NVIDIA has this 12 years mode on, on CUDA, right? The reality is they don't. And one reason why they don't is every time you come up with a new GPU, you have to rewrite every single one of the kernels you have, every single one of them. Because new GPUs come with new uh, memory hierarchy. It's not the same amount of internal memory, registers, local memory, cache, HBM, everything changes. And performance of kernel basically depends on how you slice and dice your tensors to make optimal use of the SRAM. If you start going out to HBM, you lose. You have to make optimized use of SRAM. And that hierarchy changes every single GPU. So every year they come with a new GPU, so do we. And every year they have to write everything from scratch, and so do we. So it's not, it's not a 15 years old mode. It's really not. And, uh, and we can see it with DeepSeek. I mean, we did that in two weeks, and they're still not there. So there is really no moat. That's, uh, that's something that really people need to internalize. Um, I also came with, uh, I mean, you have free GPUs today, right, with uh, Cruzo. I also came with another QR code. Uh, you can scan that and, and get uh, more free uh, GPUs after. Uh, basically, uh, we, we will distribute, we, we will get your request and distribute it to, to different uh, CSPs. We have, uh, I don't know, more than a dozen CSPs that uh, offer our GPUs, and uh, that's what we'll do. And I saw Jeff over there uh, from TensorWave. He's, he's one of our big uh, Neo Clouds. Neo, Neo, Neo Clouds are basically CSPs that used to do crypto mining, and now they do AI. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> OK. That's it. Thank you very Th much. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>